Hello, Eric. How can I help you today? Excuse me, hello, teacher. I'm sorry to bother you, but I have a question. Oh. What's the question you want to ask me? Tell me. Thank you. The thing is, I'm having trouble improving my English. Well, you're not bad. In fact, you did well on the last exam. What seems to be the problem? It's probably not enough. I mean, I need to improve my English quickly. I've already told you, I just need to practice. That's the way to improve your language skills. The thing is, I need to get a better job, and I need to speak English very well for that. Please, I need your help. I can listen and understand, but I can't speak fluently. I understand fluency comes with time, but I can give you some tips. Are you taking notes of the new vocabulary we learn in class every day? I do, but it doesn't work for me. I take notes of all the new words, but then I don't use them. That's where you're going wrong. It's not just about taking notes, Eric. You need to use the new words you write down. If you don't, what good is it? Work on building your vocabulary every day by choosing new words and repeating them over and over to reinforce your memory. I remember you mentioned that last time, associating new vocabulary with other words. Exactly. That's the best way to learn new words in English. People think translating a word is enough, but it's useless if you can't use it. That's why you have to incorporate new vocabulary into your daily life, real life. I think I understand. It's not enough to know what something means if we don't use it, we'll forget the word we learned, right? That's right. That's how you can speak advanced English, learning new words and using them in your real life. Please, don't forget this tip, it's important. Wow, that's an excellent tip. I need more, please, more tips. Well, Another thing that worked for me was surrounding myself with English. You don't need to be in an English-speaking country to do that. Find ways to make English part of your everyday life at home, like writing your shopping list, reading the newspaper, listening to the radio, or writing a diary in English. That worked for me. Also, listening to English on my cell phone while traveling to work, videos, podcasts, etc. It seems like you're already doing that by listening to videos on YouTube to improve your listening skills. That's great. But sometimes, it's not enough. You need to listen and pay attention. If you don't understand a new word or phrase, take note of it and start using it. Yes, I'm doing that in the first tip. Oh, and you can also make English-speaking friends? English friends? You mean people who speak English or people who want to speak English? It can be both. The idea is to find friends with the same goals and objectives as you. That way, 
you can help each other improve your English by practicing and correcting each other. I know that also happened to me. They're motivated at first, but then they give up. And that's normal, because this is not something easy to do. It takes hard work, and not all of our friends are as motivated as we are, Eric. Keep that in mind. Oh, before I forget, motivation is something good, but it's not everything. Being motivated is good to start doing something, but you can't be motivated all the time. And when there's a lack of motivation, you'll need something really important, discipline. Discipline? I am disciplined. I always do my homework and projects on time. Yes, but that's because if you don't do them, you'll probably get a bad score, right? Being disciplined means committing yourself to do what you have to do, even if you don't want to. I get it. And one more question, teacher. How often should I study or practice? I study English every day, but someone told me that's not good, so how often? It all depends on you. Look, I've been teaching English for more than 15 years, so let me tell you something I've learned, the important thing is to determine how much you can handle. Some people get stressed easily, while others can handle hard work and pressure normally. So, if you can practice all day, that's perfect. The more you practice, the better and quicker you'll learn. Don't listen to those people who tell you that you only need one hour a day or one day a week. It might work, but it'll take many years to speak English. That's silly. If you want to accelerate your learning, you need to add more hours to your practice. But also, be realistic. Learning a language takes time. You can't become fluent in just a week or a month. Yes, I know that. But I am determined to learn and master this beautiful language. Sorry, teacher, there are many things that these experts say in the teaching of English. I'd like to know more about that. For example, can I use a dictionary or translator? My last teacher told me not to use them because we are learning English, and that's forbidden. That doesn't make sense. In order to learn new words, you need to know what they mean first. But there are ways to use a dictionary or translator effectively. That's a relief to hear. I always thought using a dictionary or translator was cheating in language learning. Not at all, Eric. In fact, they can be powerful tools to aid your learning. However, it's essential to use them wisely. Here are some tips for using a dictionary or translator effectively. Context matters. When you encounter a new word while reading or listening, try to understand its meaning from the context before using a dictionary. This way, you'll improve your ability to infer word meanings which is a valuable skill. Learn phrases, not just words. Instead of translating individual words, focus on learning common phrases or idiomatic expressions. This will help you speak more naturally and fluently. Practice pronunciation. Most online dictionaries also provide audio pronunciations. Use these resources to improve your pronunciation and accent. Translate sparingly. While translating a sentence or paragraph can help you understand the overall meaning, try to avoid translating every single word. 
it's better to engage with the text in its original language as much as possible. Learn synonyms and antonyms. Dictionaries often provide synonyms and antonyms. Expanding your vocabulary with these related words can be very beneficial. Create vocabulary lists. Whenever you look up a word, add it to a vocabulary list. Review these lists regularly to reinforce your learning. These are excellent tips, especially about learning phrases and not just individual words. I'll start using my dictionary more effectively. I'm glad you found them helpful, Eric. Remember, language learning is a journey, and it's perfectly normal to encounter challenges along the way. The key is to stay persistent, keep practicing, and use the available resources to your advantage. Thank you so much for your guidance, teacher. I feel much more confident now about improving my English. You're very welcome, Eric. I have no doubt that with your determination and the right approach, you'll achieve your goal of speaking English fluently. If you ever have more questions or need further assistance, don't hesitate to ask. I won't, teacher. Thanks again for your support and valuable advice. You're welcome, Eric. Keep up the good work, and I look forward to seeing your progress. Have a great day.